welcome back to another weekly analysis behind the news. We are closely watching President-elect Trump's administration picks. While we sincerely congratulate him on his election and hope that he keeps his election promises, we have seen that in the past the election rhetoric continues after the election, but the action is secured by establishment politicians, which end up scuttling those very promises. Granted, it's very early, but that's the type of foundation that we fear is being built upon in this case too. It looks as though the establishment is using this as an opportunity to ensure its agenda is adhered to by lining up placement potentials. So who's doing this? Is this Trump's doing? Or is this Newt Gingrich's hand somehow in this by fulfilling what he said regarding his desire to be a strategic planner for the administration? Others have pointed to Jeb Bush as having a hand in this. As an aside, Jeb Bush just called for a constitutional convention to pass an amendment for term limits. Knowing what we do about Jeb, is it any wonder that he would endorse such a misguided project? In any regard, the majority of these picks do not bode well for fulfilling certain campaign promises of reining in the federal government. This is reminiscent of when Ronald Reagan first won election. So much hype and hope was placed into him that it was easy to get discouraged from a constitutional perspective. The casual observer will note that his policies resulted in an economic boon for Americans, but constitutionalists will note that the growth of the federal government may have slowed down, but it did not shrink. It's unfortunate that he was unable to reconcile his efforts with his rhetoric, especially his famous line, government is not the solution to our problem, government is the problem. So is this what we can expect from President-elect Donald Trump? Should we reserve ourselves to be content with many victories like curtailing illegal immigration and stopping TPP instead of watching the slash and burn of various federal agencies in order to get back to the limitations of the U.S. Constitution? Should we recognize that the federal government is so entrenched into our daily lives that it's impossible to make big changes? Well, that's exactly what the other side wants you to think. They're hoping that you grow complacent and frustrated to the point that you throw your hands in the air and pull yourself out of this fight. Or perhaps they want you to think that you've already won with Trump being in the office and that you will withdraw yourself. Look at the election cycles from Carter to Reagan to Bush to Clinton to Bush to Obama to Trump. Notice the seesaw effect of the American electorate. We need to take advantage of opportunities where we can and make opportunities where they do not exist. Specifically, the House of Representatives has got some decent members that can help make a big difference, especially if other members coalesce behind their leadership. State legislatures can also make an impact through nullification and resolutions to Congress. So how can you get involved? Educate yourself, educate others, and organize locally. Through the power of many funneled through organization, can you make a big impact on not just your local community, but on the direction of this country? Does that sound too pie in the sky? Well, try us to find out. Back to Trump. The New American has been keeping up to date on the picks and possible picks in a Trump administration, giving us the pros and cons on each. We recommend you regularly visit thenewamerican.com to stay up to date. Among these headlines are Trump picks former Goldman Sachs banker for Treasury Secretary. Trump picks Elaine Chao for Transportation Secretary. Trump picks Nikki Haley for Ambassador to UN. Rand Paul questions sustainability, or excuse me, suitability of candidates under consideration to, he to head Trump State Department. And Trump's Attorney General pick, Jeff Sessions, has fought illegal immigration and TPP. Also, the newest issue of the magazine goes in depth on why Trump won and how globalists will not be giving up without a fight. Most interestingly, it describes Trump as being more akin to a European conservative like Nigel Farage. Yet Trump comes at this from a business perspective. We imagine he will be making a priority of lowering taxes, 
and perhaps opening mineral rights on federal lands, chaining the EPA attack dog, and allowing the free market more of a role in finance and economic matters. Trouble spots still include health care and Obamacare. Or, excuse me, health care and Common Core. One thing to watch closely, and that is who Trump surrounds himself with, even beyond cabinet picks and advisors. Will establishment types like Paul Ryan, Mitch McConnell, John McCain, Lindsey Graham, Newt Gingrich, and Jeb Bush have much of a role? How will these globalists reconcile their agenda with Trump's America First agenda? In the Goldwater campaign of the late 1960s, JBS members were very active on an individual basis and not in a JBS capacity. The conclusion from someone very close to the campaign regarding why it failed is that it was scuttled from within. Professional establishment types were brought in to help channel activity, but those who were solid constitutionalists were not allowed to serve in leadership positions for the campaign, nor would constitutionalists running for office be promoted by the party, unless they were forced to for one reason or another. If that is the case here, we will see many more campaign promises dropped by the wayside and Trump's stronger rhetoric to lose its sting. But of course, we should at least give him an opportunity to succeed. Be sure to like and share this video with family and friends. Visit JBS.org to sign up for our e-newsletters and subscribe to our social media channels. Until next week, we'll see you then.